Welcome back everyone. In this episode, we'll take a look at the different effects. So first we have the shadows. We have two types of shadows. We have drop shadow and inner shadow. So once we select any object, so here we have a button design. We can simply go down at the bottom over here. So right on top of export, we have our effects section. If we simply click on the plus icon, that will let us add an effect from the four available effects. So we have four different effects. So we have the drop shadow, the inner shadow, the layer blur and the background. So and we have the settings on the left over here. So if we click on this icon, then we have all of these settings over here. So the drop shadow, if we zoom in, you can see. So the drop shadow adds a small shadow underneath the object. So we can place, uh, we can play with the placement of the object over here. So if I simply put in five over here, you can see my sh shadow has shifted to the right. So we have our X and Y coordinates of our shadow. We have the blur amount. So this dictates how much the shadow is going to be blurred. And then we have the opacity and color. So we can also have change the color of our shadow. So if I simply put it our darker color, so this gets darker. So these settings apply to all of these, uh, all of the uh, effects. Now we can change the effects by simply uh, clicking from this drop down menu and then we can change it to any other effect. So by default, it will be drop shadow. Next, we have the inner shadow. So this simply brings in the shadow inside of my bounding box. So you can see there is this shadow over here. This has this has exactly the same settings as the drop shadow and this basically sort of gives a 3d effect to our buttons and everything else now next to that we have layer blur and background blur a layer blur is given to the a specific layer so here I have a image over here so if I select the image you can see that I've already applied the layer blur so the layer blur settings we have the simply one option how much blurred we want so if I simply put in 20, this will be blurred out of context completely. So this helps us distinguish text bit on top of images like this. And next we have the background blur. So this is al uh, almost the same except this is applied to the foreground object. So here the foreground object is this text bounding box. And to that we have the background blur. And this also has only one setting which is the blur setting. So we can dictate how much the background is going to be blurred. So this is only applied to the bounding box of my foreground object so whatever my uh, top object is that underneath that is going to be blurred out like this so these two settings are uh, very handy when using text on top of images so this will be all for today guys and I'll see you back on the next episode